Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Welcome to Lancer. In today's episode, Urkala, from the Apollyon Files, by Sitskrieg Chen. Urkala, Kur, Kuku, Erily, Kegel, Ursitu, all these words stand for one thing, the Mesopotamian underworld, ruled by Erish Kegel, the goddess of the land of the dead. There are many stories about Urkala, but the only one you need to know now is the story of Inanna or Ishtar's descent into the underworld in an attempt to extend her power there. But through the seven gates of hell, her power was stripped with each gate passed and eventually she was trapped within Urkala. The tale later ends with her getting out with her husband taking her place, but this isn't the case here. Named after the Mesopotamian underworld, Urkala keeps the very real proto-monist, Ishtar, trapped within its chassis, whom you may give offering to aid you in your journey. Looking at its stat, Urkala has low health but 3 armor, and low evasion but excellent E defense. Its speed is decent, its heat cap isn't bad either, and it has an excellent sensor range that also comes with a good tech attack bonus and excellent save target. Onto its trait, it only has one. Gilded throne baptized tenfold by the ascendant gaze, this is going to be a very wordful lice Urkala can install up to 2 system with AI tag by default. In short, Urkala can pack 2 NHP wafers in it, too bad one of the slot got stuffed with a useless goddess. <laughs> Wonderful goddess already. Wait what the fu- Onto the weapon mount, you get only one, a heavy, but you have 7 system points so that's nice. As for the core system, Urkala has the Demiurge Supreme which held the Ishtar class proto monist. As a passive, your mech gains AI property and the following action, vie for the hand of your forsaken Demiurge. Basically, any time on your turn or as a reaction, you can choose to do something to or for your GM aka the goddess here whether in game or in real life in exchange for a miracle. If they are satisfied, impressed, or amazed by your offering, you gain one miracle which you must immediately spend for one of the following effects. You could cause a target within your sensor range to receive 6 plus grit AP energy damage, this does not count as an attack and could not be reduced or avoided in any way possible. You could also gain resistance to all damage until the start of your next turn. Or you could clear all statuses and conditions on your mech instead. Lastly, you could get teleport by 3d6 spaces in any direction. However, if your GM or Ishtar is not satisfied with your offering, you take 3 burn immediately. If you can't even think of an offering while asking for a miracle, you take 4 plus grit AP energy damage or 2d3 plus 4 heat for being impatience. Just think of something first, it can be an in-character narrative sacrifices, a good roleplay, or even a good joke. While Ishtar has AI tag, it cannot be unshackled but it does have a free will and mind of its own, try to be nice to it. As for the core power, Ishtar can activate decipher the intestines of the sons of Dimas. Essentially, until the end of your next turn, you have three chances to completely break the plot, thus potentially ruining the mountain of plot your GM was previously planning. Though to be more specific, you can only change the narrative description, like say turning a lethal hit into merely incapacitating, or turning an ally into your rival. The effect is immediately and noticeable, but none of the people in game will be able to recall how it happened. But in the end, your GM could still veto your changes, in which case for each veto, Urkala get healed by 2d6 health points and get a free miracle which again, you must use immediately. This is one stupidly powerful core power that's for sure. Even if your GM doesn't like any of your change, you still get your health back and the free miracle can be an insane wild card to have around. Onto the rest of the license, you get they are below me and quarter your enemies into monuments of my conquest in the first section. They are below me, is a quick tech system upgrade in which for a limited number of time, if there's a NHP going crazy within your sensor range or right within your mech, you can ask Ishtar to kick the sense back into them as a tech attack, reshackling them. A willing target could also allow the attack to succeed automatically. Good if you want to keep some NHP in check. Quarter your enemies into monuments of my conquest is an invasion upgrade which gives you two additional options. First, snap their femurs, causes the target to be immobilized and gain two heat every time they enter or are within three spaces of another character. But they can end this effect by clearing it with a quick action and passing a successful system save. Second, devour their pancreas, whenever an attacker inflicts a critical hit onto the target, the attacker gain 1d3 health points. This effect can also be ended by the target with a quick action and passing successful system save. In the second section, you get Star of Venus and witness the dismemberment of your reality aside from Urkala frame itself. 
Star of Venus. <laughs> is a heavy beam nexus weapon. The damage might look low, but it has AP to ignore armor completely, burn damage to ensure mortality, and it's also a line weapon which can pierce through multiple targets. However, you probably notice it has range and it's longer than the line, what this means is it can shoot up to 10 spaces but the line damage pattern can only reach up to 5 spaces away. A good line heavy that can go through targets easily. Witness the dismemberment of your reality, is a limited systems in which you can activate and deactivate with a full action. After activating it, at the start of your next turn, everyone within a wide area around you including you is affected by the systems. Any attack made by, or against characters within the zone gain seeking tag and its damage cannot be reduced by any means possible. For once per turn as a reaction, you may contest an attack affected by the zone with your own ranged attack roll, and if your roll is higher, you may redirect the attack to another character within the zone. However, your mech is slowed and jammed while this field is active. In the final section, you get Bull of Heaven and Arish Kiggle class NHP. Bull of Heaven, is a not so subtle system in which after spending a full action, you can choose an ally within your sensor range and yeet them 10 spaces in a straight line in a direction of your choice. Your ally can pass right through characters and objects but can't end in them, ignoring engagement and do not provoke reaction to. All objects passed through take 5 AP damage, not enough to destroy size 1 objects but just barely. All characters passed through must make an agility save against your mech save target instead of your allies 1 or take 2d6 energy damage and get knocked prone. However, your ally is immobilized until the end of their next turn, so don't yeet them right into the enemy formation, unless they ask for that insistently. And finally, Arish Kiggle class NHP, a NHP that put you on the brink of death yet ensuring you will never fall unless you want to. Your mech gains AI property and a protocol called, the mortal dead. Upon activation with an addition of 3 heat cost, your pilot's health get reduced to 1, yes you read that correctly, and your mech structure is reduced to 1. In exchange for that, you get an overshield equal to your mech's maximum health points times the number of structure you had at the time of activation. What's overshield, basically an additional health point that can push above your maximum health pool that disappears at the end of the scene. Which means you get a buttload of overshield in exchange for being one foot in the grave, which also means when you take damage that would usually cause you to take a structure damage, you don't, and get to keep your mech running rather than worrying about being screwed over by the structure check. And if you ran out of overshield somehow, don't worry, the mortal dead isn't a limited system so you can activate it as a protocol as long as you can handle the heat for basically free health points. But, if you still manage to destroy your own mech even after all that, you are really screwed. Do note that you can't stack over shield, so just pick the higher value one when you have two, and you can't repair or heal over shield. In total, Urkala is a strange as all hell mech frame that can be extremely powerful and tough if you are in a good relationship with your goddess. If you don't, well, just don't demand so many things from them, unless you are masochistic. Mm -hmm.